Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a somewhat homemade equation. We have z equals e to the power i theta and we're supposed to find the absolute value of z plus 1. So z is given in polar form and the reason why I call this homemade problem or somewhat homemade is because I kind of thought about the idea but these kinds of problems are very common and you can come up with something like this. And if you ever do, please let me know. Let us know in the comment section or using the form you can submit your suggestions. Check the description. All right, great. So we're basically going to be finding the absolute value of a complex number, z plus one, because z is a complex number, right? But if we were finding the absolute value of z, that would be easy, right? Don't you think? Because it will be one. There is nothing in front of e to the i theta r is 1, in other words, it will be fairly easy, right? But z plus 1 is just kind of messing it up a little bit. But we can still do it. And notice that theta is the only variable here, so our solution is going to be in terms of theta. All right, ready? Let's go ahead and use Euler's formula. What is Euler's formula? And if you haven't uh, done complex numbers before, if you're new to complex numbers, Go ahead and check out my lecture videos. I made a playlist, so on and so forth. Okay, so what is e to the i theta? It is cosine theta plus i sine theta, All right? So this is called Euler's formula, and it's just amazing. It's amazing because it's from Euler, right? So it kind of gives us a really cool relationship between an exponential and a complex or imaginary number and trigonometry. Beautiful connection. A beautiful connection and obviously if you replace theta with certain values like pi pi over 2 negative pi you're gonna get amazing identities uh, one of which is basically if you replace theta with pi for example you're gonna get e to the i pi equals cosine pi plus i sine pi and then since cosine pi is negative 1 and sine pi is 0, we can basically write this as e to the i pi equals negative 1. Isn't that beautiful? It's just amazing. We have a transcendental number, we have an irrational number, we have an imaginary number, and we have an integer. And this equation just puts it all together in a beautiful context. So you, some people also write this equation as e to the i pi plus 1 is equal to 0. So interesting relationships. Great, so that's Euler's formula in a nutshell, and now we're going to use it to our advantage. How do we use this though, right? This is e to the i theta, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add 1 to it, right? Because this is z, and I want to find the absolute value of z plus 1. So we're going to find the absolute value of the following number. What is e to the i theta again? Cosine theta plus i sine theta plus 1. Okay, isn't the absolute value of this one again? No. Be careful, even though you kind of have this expression all inside the absolute value, we still have to find the answer in terms of theta. Again, if you didn't have the one, it will be one because cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to one. But you cannot say the same thing for the uh, absolute value from here. Again, that gives us an idea, which I guess we could call the second method. And since it just popped up because I didn't really think about it before, let's go ahead and start this problem with the second method, okay? All right, what I came up with, second, is the second method, obviously. So let's go ahead and rewrite it as 1 plus cosine theta plus i times sine theta. So we can kind of separate the real and the imaginary parts. This is the real part. This is the imaginary part. And the absolute value is defined as follows. The square root of the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared, right? Let's go ahead and simplify this, and that's, an, that's going to give you the answer, right? Oh, by the way, I forgot to write this. This is the second method. And now we'll do the sec uh, first method second. Okay, I'm confusing myself here. So how do you simplify this? Let's expand it. 1 plus 2 cosine theta plus cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. Do you see what I see? Sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. Isn't that amazing? That gives us a really cool identity. 1 plus 1, that's going to become a 2. So we'll get 2 plus 2 cosine theta. And the square root of that, of course. So that's the answer, but guess what? We can simplify it. 
using what? Double angle formulas. Okay? Or should I say half angle? All right, let's see. So cosine theta can be replaced with something nice. In order to be able to see that, I guess I will take out a 2 and write this as 1 plus cosine theta because that's going to simplify the process a little bit, a tiny bit. Now cosine theta has three formulas. What are they? Let's write them all in terms of half of theta because theta in this case is double angle. So cosine squared theta over 2 minus sine squared theta over 2 is one of them. Another one is 2 cosine squared theta over 2 minus 1, and that comes from the Pythagorean theorem. And the third one is 1 minus 2 cosine squared, I mean sine squared theta over 2. Which one am I going to use? Since we have a 1 here, I want to use the one with the negative 1, which is this one, so that the 1's cancel out. Get it? Great. Now let's see. 2 times the quantity 1 plus cosine theta, I'm going to replace it with 2 cosine squared theta over 2 minus 1, and then this cancels out nicely. These two cancel out, leaving us with 4 cosine squared theta over 2. Of course, we're going to make some assumptions here. Come on. Let's say we're in the first quadrant. I mean, we don't have to be, and obviously other quadrants you can evaluate accordingly, but I'm just going to want to keep it simple. And this is the absolute value, but I'm going to go with the positive solution, 2 cosine theta over 2. And that's the answer. Are you serious? Yes. That is the answer. But we're going to verify our work or answer with the first method. Remember, we did the second method first, and we're doing the first method second. But it's still the first method because that's what I came up with first. I, I hope that clarifies the um, confusion about which one is first, which one is second. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. e to the i theta plus 1. Remember, we wrote it as cosine theta plus i sine theta plus 1. So I'm going to take it from here with the first method. Again, I'm going to use the half angle or double angle formulas, right? But notice I haven't used the absolute value definition. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and replace cosine theta with 2 cosine squared theta over 2 minus 1 for the same reason because the ones are going to cancel out. But this is going to give us, what about sine theta? Sine theta, I'm also going to use the half angle or double angle formula. Remember, sine 2x is 2 sine x cosine x. You get the idea? You can always cut in half. So now we have the following. 2 cosine squared theta over 2 plus i times 2 sine theta over 2 times cosine theta over 2. You see, because we used the double angle formula for sine, I think this method is different, right? Don't you think? Now, I do see a common factor, which is 2 cosine theta over 2. So I'm going to pull that out. And then inside, I'm going to have cosine theta over 2 plus i times sine theta over 2. And if you call the theta over 2 alpha, something else, right? What is this going to look like? This is going to look like 2 cosine alpha times cosine alpha plus i sine alpha. Again, I got a complex number whose modulus is 1, right? This is cosine squared plus sine squared is 1. So here's what happens. This becomes the r. This becomes the e to the i alpha, we have r e to the i alpha, so r is the modulus, which is 2 cosine alpha. Wait a minute, didn't we get a different answer? 2 cosine theta over 2? Of course, it's the same one. r is 2 cosine alpha, but alpha is theta over 2, so the answer is 2 cosine theta over 2 as before. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.